hey, I'm back on YouTube and I'm on a mission and my mission will change your life. As you may or may not know, I started my YouTube channel because I wanted to urge athletes to start their self-development journey, to work on themselves, to discover who they are outside of their sport. Why did I do that? It's because I get it. I'm a professional soccer player. I know what it's like to put your whole self-worth based on your sport, but it can be extremely detrimental to your mental health. So it's important to work on yourself outside of your sport and discover um, who you are. But honestly, it's been the most rewarding journey I've been on because now I have new passions, new skills, new ambitions that are not related to my sport and I feel very secure with myself today. So I still want to spread the message that athletes need to work on themselves because you don't want to have an identity crisis when sports are over, which is inevitable. But the thing is, when you're on your self-improvement journey and you're trying to discover who you want to be, there's this huge aspect that the self-help community does not talk about, and especially for women. And that's why I'm here. I'm here on this mission to tell all women about this because this is what has held me back for so long. Because regardless of how much improvement I was making on myself, how productive I was, how much shit I was getting done, I was still feeling anxious. I was still having so many mental health issues, and I was still struggling with having some self-worth. I really cannot believe we haven't been told about this earlier because this really holds women back from reaching their full potential. So yeah, that's my mission. I'm going to tell you all about it. And I know it's going to be revolutionary to you because it was life changing for me. But before I get into it, I have to say a disclaimer. This only will change you if you're someone like me, someone that's ambitious, disciplined, productive, that's been focusing on self-improvement, that wants to reach their potential and be the best version of themselves. That can only work if you have that type of personality. So yeah, if you're someone that loves structure, loves logic, loves taking action and feel fulfilled by productivity, this video is for you. And if that's you, I feel like we could be friends because we would get along really well. We would drive each other towards success. But I'm also so sorry if that's you because I know that comes with a lot of suffering. I know it has caused you so much anxiety that you have high expectations on yourself, that you feel like you're never doing enough, that you feel disconnected from other people. You put so much pressure on yourself. You have such high criticism towards yourself and you suffer a lot. You would never impose that on anyone else, yet you do it to yourself. Why? This is the thing. We are women with way too much masculine energy. If you're not familiar with the masculine and feminine energy, they're basically energies that both men and women have. It doesn't matter what your gender is, everyone has both energies. And it also doesn't matter what your sexual orientation is as well. It could be called different names, it could be called salt and pepper, so don't associate that with gender, okay? So the masculine energy is characterized by traits such as being ambitious, discipline, taking action, logic, structure, focus, analytical, assertive. It's all about doing. Meanwhile, the feminine energy is all about being creative, intuitive, nurturing, receptive, wise, emotionally intelligent. It's all about being. But if you're like me, and especially if you're an athlete, your masculine is an overdrive because that's what's been rewarded our whole life. Our whole life, we have seen results and praise and accomplishments from being in our masculine energy. As a matter of fact, our whole culture prioritizes the attributes of the masculine energy. It's rewarding because it's tangible. We can measure it, we can track the progress, we can see the results. So no wonder why people want to have that because they can see what it gives in return. But the feminine energy is different because it's all about being, it's all about the abstract. That's why it's harder to tap into because you don't see the benefits right away. But this is what is missing to our whole self-development journey, especially for women. We need to learn into tapping into our feminine energy again. Because you have to realize that as a woman, if you're always in your masculine energy, if it works in overdrive, you're going to see tons of issues that come to the surface. Like you become hyper-independent, which is the case for me. I've become so independent. Sometimes I feel like I'll die alone. You can also become aggressive or passive aggressive. You can become emotionally numb or not able to feel intense emotions, or you just use that numbness to like cope with whatever situation. That's what makes you so disconnected from people because you have that lone wolf mentality. You have that grind, that hustle, that no excuse mentality. 
And I get it, it gets you places, but it creates so much suffering. That's what I want you to realize is that the rewards are not outweighing the risks. The risk of you being unhappy, of not living a fulfilled life. You also notice that when you're so much in your masculine, you have the need for control. You have the fear of uncertainty and you want to control everything around you, either people or situations, even things that are totally out of your control. You still try to intellectualize it. You might suffer from a lot of anxiety and re restlessness. And lastly, you might even have physical problems. You might get sick more often. You might have digestive issues. This is your body giving you signs that you're too much in your masculine energy. You need to slow down. You need to realize what it's like to be in your feminine aura. This is what has totally changed the game for me. Because for a long time, as I was working on myself, I was all about making a structured schedule, following everything, tracking habits, doing everything to be more productive and work on myself. And it's good. I saw results, but it was so much anxiety related to it because I always felt like I had to do stuff and I forgot to just be here to realize that this is my dream life, that I am living right now. What's the point to do all of these things, check all this checklist? When you can't even enjoy your life, when you're not even happy, when you're just happy based on conditions, conditions if you fulfilled something, like this is a little messed up. This little self-help community can be a little bit dangerous. So this is why the ambitious, disciplined women are so miserable. We forget, we have numbed out, we have shadowed part of our truest essence, our femininity. And the thing is, if you have big goals and big aspirations, it's not like being in your femininity will take you away from that. It's the opposite. Because then instead of working from a place of fear, you'll be working from a place of love. And stop thinking like, ooh, this is so cliche. It's true. When you work in a place of love and you wanna help people, people feel attracted to that. They wanna be around you. They don't wanna fear you. You don't want people to not want to be around you. So if you've been on your self-improvement journey, this is the trap that you need to be aware of. The self-help community loves to praise the checklist, the tracking habits, the self-discipline, the chasing goals, do this, don't do that. But if you really take the time to realize, even if you accomplish those things, you're still unhappy. You still don't feel fulfilled. You still feel like you have a deeper purpose and you're unsure of who you are and what you're meant to be. And then you feel restless, like you're missing something and you feel burnt out, but then you want to grind through it and you never actually can relax. That's all happening because you're neglecting your most powerful gift, which is your feminine energy. So once you learn how to tap into that energy, that is when you will feel the most fulfilled. And I know that that's what you want to feel. You want to be the best version of you. I know that's what you want because that's what I want. And if you resonate and if you've been listening, we're similar. We have similar mindsets. But I promise you, this is going to save you a lot of suffering if you learn how to tap into your energy right now, your truest essence, your femininity. So because this is more of an introductory video, I don't want to overwhelm you too much. I just want you to like think about this topic a little bit. But let me ask you this. At the end of the day, what do you truly want? at your deepest, at your core, what is your deepest desire? Really, not materialistic. I, I doubt that that's what you truly want at the core. You might be wanting something like peace, fulfillment, happiness, love, ecstasy, connection, laughter. So do you really think that being productive, over planning everything, checking off a checklist, sacrificing time with your real friends, chasing goals, mothering your boyfriend, pursuing accolades and rewards is going to get you closer to feeling those? I ask myself the similar question, what do I truly want? And honestly, at the most genuine reason, it's very primal. I know that I'm here to reproduce. <laughs> I feel it in my bones that I am here to be a mother. And I'm so not ready to be a mother right now, but everything I do in the back of my mind is, is this going to help me be a better mother or not? And I know that if I always focus on being in my masculine energy and I put all of my effort and energy into that, I'm going to neglect my nurturing aspect, my caring, my compassionate, my loving side and be so rough. And I'm like, that's not the type of mother I want to be. So it's so important that we practice right now being in our feminine energy. So we have good relationships because most importantly, 
it's not to have children, but it's who you have children with. And I think that's going to be the most important decision of my life, who I decide to have children with. If I stay too much in that masculine energy, I won't be able to attract a masculine partner because they work in polarities. So for me to have the masculine man that I want to have, I need to be able to be the feminine woman that I want to be. But at the end of the day, maybe you don't want that. Maybe you don't care about that. Maybe that's not your desire. But just think about how you actually feel and what you're doing right now. Is that bringing you closer to what you truly want at your core? That's it. And if it's not, this is the time to be open-minded and try something new. And I promise you, you won't regret being in your feminine energy. So if you're ready, and it's okay if you're not, but if you're ready, this is the time to focus your next chapter on healing your feminine energy. It's probably wounded right now because when you're too much in your masculine energy, it's a way for you to have compensated for a broken feminine one. And it's like this masculine energy is trying to protect and shield that feminine energy that's been hurt in the past, usually your inner child. All women are feminine by nature. This is biology. We have this nurturing aspect of us and we have a healing aspect of us. But before we're going out there and try to save the world, let's try to heal ourselves first. Because I have this big vision that women are meant to be healers and heal men and heal the world. I think women can actually change the world, but we need to first heal ourselves. This is our responsibility as women to take care of ourselves, but then to help men take care of themselves as well. We have that power and we can make a world a better place. I know it sounds like really bold and big, but... Why not? Why not think that way? Because I really think that we can all make a change. We can use social media to spread messages that we care about. And I think this is a good one. We need to heal and we need to heal others. We can do it. So once you heal, you become empowered, you become whole and you will be fulfilled. And at that point, you'll still be able to go thrive for your goals and be ambitious and reach your dreams, but it will come from a place of self-respect and love and not shame. So this is why it's beautiful. You're gonna get everything that you desire. This mission is not just me telling you about the feminine energy. It's way bigger than that. Yes, you need to heal. Yes, you have the power to heal others, but Bigger than that is that I know that you have a specific talent for getting shit done to be in your masculine energy. I know that comes natural to you and that you have an inner leader in you that needs to make an impact on the world. And if you learn how to use your masculine and feminine together, the alchemy will make you so powerful that you can literally influence so many people. So I want you to learn how to be the best leader that you can be. So start leading your life to then lead others. I hope you enjoyed this video. I will see you in my next video that will be about signs that you're too much in your masculine energy because sometimes it's hard to notice what is toxic or not or what is too much or not. So it's going to help you lay out that foundation to recognize what the problem is and then learn how to start and how to heal from there on. So hope you're excited. I'll see you soon and I love you so much. Mwah.